What a remarkable and inspiring example of dedication and volunteerism at one's alma mater. Mr. Oven, would you please join me at the lectern? In recognition of your extraordinary commitment and service to DePaul University, the Council for Advancement and Support of Education proudly presents Mr. Timothy H. Ubbin with the Ernest T. Stewart, Stewart Award for Alumni Volunteer Involvement. Thank you. Would you like to say some words? I would. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'm honored to accept an award named for Ernest Stewart. As you heard previously, uh, he was, quote, the man in alumni affairs and fundraising in the 50s and 60s, and the first executive secretary of an organization that became the predecessor to Case. I'd also like to thank DePaul University for nominating me. Appreciate that. And see how I won with so many other people more qualified. <clears throat> you know, the other day a couple of my friends came to me and said, uh, so we hear you're getting an award. I said, yes. And they said, what is it for? And I <clears throat> still straight face say, way, I, I'm getting, I've been selected as the male athlete of the year. <laughs> um, at first they frowned and then doubled over in laughter and I thought to myself, well, what are they laughing about? Come on. So I've been involved in fundraising for 30 years. So long, in fact, that when I walk into a room, people turn their back on me. <clears throat> I really admire all the effort you make on behalf of your nonprofit institutions. Through pestilence, famine, and alien invasions, to say nothing of wars, recessions, and financial crises, it's funny how your institutions always budget an increase in donations every single year. <laughs> in many ways, you've succeeded. Last year, Americans individuals, corporations, and foundations gave over $300 billion in charitable donations. That's a huge number, a really big number. But the good news is that there's still room for even more. And let me explain. In 2011, corporations gave only 0.7% of their pre-tax profits to charitable causes. And wealthy individuals, those earning over $500,000 a year, gave only 5% of their adjusted gross income, a far cry from the 50% allowed by the tax code. But individual affordability should not be based solely on income, but also on a much larger but less visible source, source the net worth of the donor. Max, maximizing a gift needs both. So your work is cut out for you. I'm confident that your ingenuity and resourcefulness will take advantage of these opportunities and experience future success. Giving has been an enriching experience for my family. I guess the word I'm looking for is uh, fulfillment. When we as fundraisers can provide the resources Fulfilling a, for fulfilling a noble cause, and do also provide a sense of fulfillment for the donor, we have really done our job well. Let me conclude with what I hope will be a humorous story. Feel free to laugh if, if you're available. So there's this preacher 
in the pulpit, exhorting his congregation to give more to the church. And he says, look what the Lord has done for all of you. Each of you ought to give one-tenth of all you get. Amen, shouted one of the parishioners, kind of catching the spirit. But one-tenth ain't enough. I say let's raise it to one-twentieth. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>